We in this country, in the past half century, have been moving away from a free society and toward an increasing degree of slavery. Not the kind of slavery that Lincoln talked about, but a kind that is no less destructive of the basic greatness and freedom of this country. A slavery in the form of an increasing role <coughs> of government in our economy, of an increasing extent to which we are the subjects and the government the master instead of the other way around. The question I want to discuss today is whether we shall continue this trend or will halt and reverse it. If we continue the trend to a collectivist economy, continue the trend to a society controlled by government, we shall lose not only our economic advantages, but also our political freedom, our political liberty. We cannot continue half slave and half free, and if we continue in the direction of slavery, we shall end up as a collectivist totalitarian society. It will have a different form than others. America is different from others. However, we need not continue in that direction. We are masters of our own destiny. We can take thought and halt it. And the question is, shall we halt it? Shall we move toward a greater degree of freedom and reduce the extent to which we are being controlled? If you want to see a clear sign of the direction in which we have been moving, it is a fact that this meeting today is being held in Washington, D.C. There have been 81, I am told, previous Congresses of the National Association of Manufacturers. Not a single one was held here. Most of them was held in New York. You have now moved your offices, and a few years later, this Congress to Washington. Why? Because you have recognized increasingly that your masters are no longer primarily your customers, but increasingly government bureaucrats, elected and non-elected. I don't blame you for recognizing the change. You would be myopic in the extreme if you did not recognize that that is what happened. It is understandable that you choose to hold your meeting where the real power is. But it is a very clear sign of what has been happening in this country. As I'll come to later, I do blame you. Again, not as individuals and not as intentionally. I do blame you for helping to bring about the shift in power from the market to the government. Make no mistake about it. Human freedom cannot exist. Human freedom has never existed without a viable, healthy, free market economy. And that is what is being destroyed. That is what is being destroyed as much by its alleged friends including many in this organization, as by its announced enemies. This country remains predominantly a free country. It remains the freest major country in the world. There are some minor countries that have a greater degree of freedom, but among the major countries, we remain the real stronghold of freedom. And yet, it is worth taking a few moments to look at how far we have come from a truly free economy, a truly free society. If we look at the problem of enterprise, of the business world, of free enterprise, we are all of us prone to get on the lecture platform and talk about the virtues of free enterprise. What does free enterprise mean? It does not mean what it is often taken to mean. It does not mean that private enterprises shall be free to do what they want, including restricting markets and keeping out competitors. That is not the fundamental meaning of the term or the meaning it has always had. 
Free enterprise means that anybody shall be free to set up an enterprise, to start small and grow big. And yet, in that sense, you are not free in this country to set up a bank unless you can get a certificate of convenience and necessity from a governmental official. You are not free in almost every city, with possibly the exception of Washington, D.C., to enter the taxicab business unless you either get a permit from City Hall or currently buy such a medallion, a permit to operate, from somebody who was lucky enough to get it some years back. You are not free to become a lawyer or a physician or a plumber or a mortician or a host of other occupations unless you can get a license from a state body certifying that you are free, that, that, you are, that you may offer your services for sale. You are not free to go into the business of delivering mail or of offering electricity or telephone service without getting a permit and permission. And in those cases, in the case of the telephone, uh, the mail, obviously a nationalized monopoly. In the case of the telephone, electricity, local monopolies, but franchised by the state. You are not free to go and raise money on the capital markets unless you will fill out the 400 or more pages of forms that SEC will demand of you at a, at a cost which has had as one of its major effects a, shy, a strong handicap to the emergence of new small enterprises in this country. In one of the most recent extensions of government power, you are not even free to make a bet with somebody on an organized exchange about what the price of wheat will be a year from now, since we have now set up a commission to control the commodity future exchanges. And I could go on and on. You people in this room can name far better than I can the enormous limitations which there are on your opportunity to engage in free enterprise in the true sense. If we go from the area of enterprise to control over your income and your property, every individual in this country works from the beginning of January to the end of May, roughly, in order to support governmental expenditures. 40, over 40% 40 of the income of the American people is now spent on their behalf by civil servants, bureaucrats, others whom they have chosen to spend their money for them. This may be good, it may be bad, but with respect to freedom, it clearly means that we have given up control over 40% of our resources. We talk about how we must avoid socialism, yet every corporation represented in this room is owned to the tune of 48% by the U.S. government. We are 48% socialist. What does it mean if I own 1% of a corporation? It means I am entitled to 1% of its profits and must share 1% of its losses up to the extent of my limited liability. But the corporate income tax, says that out of every dollar of profits, the government gets 48 cents. Out of every dollar of losses, the government loses 48 cents, up to the amount of profit that has been carried over, limited liability again. So, in the meaningful sense, not in terms of words, the car, we are 48% socialist. Let us go away from the area of economic freedom of the freedom to set up an enterprise, the freedom to control your own resources and your own income. Let's look at the political area. What has happened to the area of political freedom? Is there a corporate executive in this room who has free speech? I don't believe it. There's hardly a one of you. Maybe there's an exception in this room. But there's hardly a one of you who would, be, who, who would get up and make a speech without giving considerable thought to what effect that would have on IRS, 
on the Justice Department, you name the other department. If I were giving this speech, this talk, before some of my academic colleagues, they would say to me at this stage, well, what are you worrying about? Those are only businessmen. What difference does it make if they have freedom of speech? What really matters is the intellectuals. But do my fellow academics have freedom of speech? If you were a professor in a medical school in any university in this country, do you suppose that you wouldn't think three times before you gave a speech on social, uh, against socialized medicine when half of your budget is coming from the National Institute of Health? If you were one of my colleagues, even in the field of economics, who was receiving grants from the National Science Foundation to support his research, you don't suppose that would affect your willingness to give a speech about how undesirable it is that government should be subsidizing that kind of research? The record is clear. We are predominantly a free society, but we have an enormous range of restrictions on our freedom, and those restrictions will grow and grow unless we can somehow bring a halt to this expansion of government power. Thank you.